No, you just have to get a good source of water. Check these big trees, Check these big trees, bro. Oh, I lost a lot of worms, so it's one bathtub is still living worms, the rest all died. Um, so we've started planting again. Maurice is our manager of the vegetable garden, he's somewhere down there. And um, we also had chickens, but they got stolen. So. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got swans um, and I've got geese. There's a whole troop of geese running around at the bottom. We've got peacocks that are pest at the moment. Um, they love duck up plants, they eat everything that they can see. Um, so yeah, and then this is the sister's uh, convent, the sister's of Providence. So the story goes, um, the priests, all my older priests, came here in 2006. All right. There's a guy that was buried, his graves down there, where they chopped up. So we got this property for 24 rand, 25 rand, somewhere around there. All right. And it was a rubbish site. So we started building and it's been piece for piece every year. If you can look on Google Photos, you can see we've been building non-stop. All right, so it's small things that we do on a daily basis. And now the cannabis is our newest addition because it's a plant that I love and it's for healing and you know, whatever spiritual, yeah, to whatever people do, for me, that is the plant, you know. Um, so yeah, so I'll take you guys now to our centers. The sisters have their alcohol syndrome kids here, and then I'll show you everyone that side. And you guys are going to meet Ingrid. She also smokes weed. She's like the Terminator. She just works, eh? and she'll smoke with a joint, and then she carries on working. <laughs> this way. <laughs> So this is my daycare center, St. Luigi's. Myself, Feral, so she runs this place with Ingrid and Joanne. I look after around, I feed 273 children daily. All right, I've got different groups coming in between the boys and the girls on different days. So the boys will average 130, the girls 150 more or less, aging from age five to 14. Then I've got my youth center, which I'll take you all to now. All right, so this is where they, this used to be a mall. Where they used to keep bodies and for the car repair shop at the top and so now we've had this in 2006 so yeah um guys you can feel free to look around inside i think it's open upstairs let me just quickly check and then we've got the sisters next door if you guys want to go and have a look um let me just go uh john john i'm seeing a sister vivian lungs on this lift all right so we've got alcohol syndrome fetus children we've got 45 of them that the sisters look after that are part of a feeding scheme and stuff with the department of social development so also the idea with our cannabis is the stuff that we grow goes back into funding these projects because we can't rely on overseas all the time so that's the idea is that cannabis funds our projects we're all talking but we've now started doing it yeah. you know well that's so, that, that's, so yeah well um so those that want to go and look you can go with jean they're trying to go and They've got kids at the moment, so if you want to go and have a look that side and feel free to go to the pool. Okay, so Ingrid will open and the kids play at the top. We've got a large area, so if you guys want to have a look around, feel free. There are bathrooms inside. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, you can have a look around. Ingrid will open upstairs. Any questions? I am here. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, cool. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. So the bathroom's inside it? Yeah, inside you'll see. Thank you guys.
Yeah. Yeah. Can someone smell the food already? Yeah. <laughs> like you are. So obviously not made for adults. Yeah. <laughs> made for the short people. Ah, you mean the, the bowl? Only two bodies, but the little. All right, can we move down to the youth center and over the shelter this way? So yeah. It's going to be a, a few very informal days, but I think it's very important that we understand who each other is and what we're here for. Um, I saw at the conference in the Vol that you know by the end of the conference, people were starting to have conversations and then only realized, oh, but you do this, you know. So use this time, really use this time. Everybody that's here is here for a purpose and is really pushing this thing forward. And that's why I feel it's so important that I want to share with you the tools that we use or that I use personally um, and that I use to set up this business model and that I try and stick to every day and that is the permaculture flower now this is probably the most powerful tool that I've ever received in my life it's something you should have in your mental toolbox for sure and I'm not going to waste your time on it today but I'd much rather when we walk through and take a bit of a tour of the complex we can chat about some of the concepts that are put in practice here. <coughs> this permaculture flower is lovely in the sense that it's a design science, but it's the only design science I know about that's got ethics at its core. And these ethics are very simple. You must care for people. Those people can care for the one earth we have. And while doing that, we must produce and share in the surplus. So if you can tick those three boxes in everything that you do, every decision you make every day, it's very simple, you know, to stick to those universal truths and to make something move forward. Now these three ethics are applied using 12 principles and you'll see these principles listed down the side. Now again, just common sense principles, but if you've got this thing as a screenshot on your phone and you flip it open, any situation that you encounter or difficult situation, you run from <coughs> 1 to 12, it just makes so much sense. And the first one here is observe and interact. <laughs> have a bit of a look, interact a bit, see what happens, but very important to observe and interact, not just to and nosedive in straight forward and then try and bulldoze through everything else. So that really helps sometimes. <laughs> the second one, catch and store energy. Now this not only applies to when you're designing a garden or you're doing a layout for a house or you're trying to be off-grid. This also goes for everyday life, you know, keep Keep uh, your energy, which is the most expensive thing to have in the world, be efficient with that. You know, catch and store it. Number three, obtain a yield. Doesn't matter what you do, you must always reap the benefits of that situation. So even if you only remember this permaculture flower or one of these things, we have obtained a yield today. Right? But make sure that you obtain a yield. It's also great for the confidence to actually do something, finish something, and then move on to the next thing, even though it's a small little box that you tick in. Number four is self-regulation and feedback. If you operate in the cannabis industry at the moment, you definitely need to self-regulate. We don't have guidelines governing us at this point. We are creating those guidelines. We are setting those standards. Renewable resources, super important. Um, I think it was Aiden that took people to the coast and showed them all the litter there and said, we're not gonna be part of this, you know? We have to, in everything we do, whether it's a banky you put dacha in, or whether it's you know the vehicle that you drive, make sure that you're using renewable resources. You only have so much of what's around us. And you'll be surprised any little little effort that you put in actually makes a difference. And that leads into number six: produce zero waste. 
in a system, in a permaculture system, in a farming setup, in a setup like this, there is no waste. Whenever there's a product left over from a certain process, that needs to go into the next process. Right? You don't have too many locusts in your garden. You don't have enough chickens. Right? So you've got to start thinking like that. You've got to produce zero waste. Every single thing that you produce, whether in your business, in your everyday life, must be able to be a resource to be used in a different process. Number seven, design from pattern to detail. That's why I always give this a bit of a brief so you can just kind of see where, where, um, where, which direction we're going in. Because we tend to focus a lot and be control freaks and try and zoom in on those little to-do lists and we want to figure out every single thing to the very specific point. Where we should just observe and interact a little bit, step back, see the big picture first and then start focusing on the little things that you can actually change. Number eight is integrate rather than segregate. Now when you apply these principles to your vegetable garden, you would integrate more species of plants. When you apply it to something like a social club, you might include more events or more people. And in a country like ours, we don't, we don't need to stress more how important integration is rather than segregation. You know? If you think of what's happening in a forest, where a forest and a grassland comes together, it's on that edge of chaos where the grass is competing with the trees and where the biodiversity changes. It's on this edge of chaos where the most opportunity lies. And I don't think we've been in, been in a more chaotic situation than at the moment, you know. And that's exactly because, well, why we have to see, this is where the most opportunity is. There's a permaculture principle that Fissy enjoys a lot and it meant a lot to me as well. And it says that the solution is in the problem. And yeah, when I heard that the first time, it blew me away. Because it is like that. Go and take any situation and you'll realize very quickly the solution is in the problem. You just need to identify the problem so that you can start working on the solution. But it's all given to you. That's the beauty of nature. It's all there. Number nine, small and slow solutions. Sure, this is one I struggle with. <laughs> I want to go flat out, full power, and I want to make stuff happen. But small and slow solutions are definitely the ones that actually... Uh, what's the story about the, the tortoise and the hare, you know? Slowly, slowly wins the race. It's that consistency. It's that improving yourself 1% every day, or your project 1% every day, you know? Small and slow solutions. Use and value diversity, number 10, pretty much falls into the same category for me as integrate rather than segregate. 11, use the edges. I was talking earlier about the, the edge between the forest and the grassland. Now those edges where different spheres meet, where different cultures overlap, where different businesses connect. In a business sense, in a social club sense, that is where the most opportunity is. Just like in a forest where these two bio biospheres meet up and then number 12 and probably the most important one for our industry at the moment creatively use and respond to change because <coughs> it happens quickly you know one day the next day it's sort of okay the next day you can sell CBD anybody can sell CBD as long as it's not more than 20 milligrams per dose the next day the next thing changes and then I see this week they were discussing the private purposes bill and I think we're going to creatively have to respond to quite a bit of change because what I heard from the government side this week was that setting up social clubs is going to be too difficult. It's too labor intensive. The licensing fee won't cover the administrative costs so they won't be able to police it so they don't think it's a good idea. All right? So that's kind of what we're dealing with. Like literally they said for four hours in that meeting Yo, this is too much work, so we're not going <laughs> to creatively respond, use and respond to change. Um, now, these 12 principles, like I say, I use that as almost a to-do list. It's almost like breathing in deep and counting 1 to 10, you know? Just kind of run through those and make sure you're not being a poop -ball. <laughs> to apply <coughs> To apply these principles, the flowers made it so easy for us because now it gets broken up into seven different domains. Now each one of these petals of the flower is a different domain, like land tenure and community governance. What are the rules and regulations and laws? 
So when it comes to a social club, obviously we know you have to be an adult, it must be in private, it must be for your own consumption. So those are all laws we govern by. Then we have a look at the proposed bill. Then we have a look at what's happening in the Hayes Club case or any other court cases currently. So what are the rules and regulations? <laughs> the second domain is land and nature stewardship. Who is doing what with the land? All right? So again, in the club case, we can talk about what a president does, what the committee does, what a cultivating member, processing member does. <coughs> the third domain is the built environment. All the buildings, all the infrastructure, talking about clubhouses, greenhouses, tunnels, any built environment. Tools and technology, the next domain. Obviously we use loads of systems, apps, um, anything from your garden spray to a uh, scale that you weigh the stuff with can fall into this domain. The next one is culture and education, a massive domain that some people miss when they're setting up a club. Club is not a commercial venture. Club is so much more. It's a community-driven initiative. There must be a culture there. It's not that people just go there for the best ARV weed. They can get that at any of the other clubs. <laughs> They've got to go there for something specific, right? Um, so I think like we're sitting in a setting now where Mark and them are, uh, they want to open up a club on Sundays only. Can you imagine what this place is going to look like if you can come here on a Sunday and come and hit the bong with a priest? My man, talk about culture. Oh, that's quite unique. Part of the culture is the education as well. There's sporadic attempts at educational programs and things at the moment. There are a few companies that are doing cannabis specific training. But it's like anything else, people are trying to make money. People are focusing their efforts just to get as many people to do these courses and they're not necessarily focused on the quality. So a very important domain to sort out is culture and education. The sixth one is health and spiritual well-being. And I think um, it's quite obvious to see what all these health and spiritual benefits are with this plant that's connecting us. Um, I mean, it's incredible to me when we finished the last Galapan, I could end off by asking what has the Conte Seasway War Veterans, the Catholic Church and Jack Parrow have in common? And everybody shouted, Dacha, you know? So it's like, even if you look around you now, look at what a unifying factor it is, you know? When it comes to spiritual beliefs, cultures, languages, just bringing people together. <coughs> so health and spiritual well-being, I think we all know what benefit cannabis and cannabis clubs can bring to us. And then something that some, uh, the sector that a lot of people blindly stare at always is finances and economics. And I love to leave it for last because it's one of my least favorite subjects because your know, money is such a weird concept to me. But hey, thank you. Is it from yellow bottom? Yeah, it's from yellow. There's not any cars of water here, is it? Holy water. Holy water. Finances and economics, a big mistake people still make is, I hear a lot of people saying, okay, I want to start a commercial cannabis farm. So the easy way in is going to be to start the club, I'm going to put up a tunnel, I'm going to grab a bunch of weed, and I'm going to open a coffee shop, and then there's going to be a lot of people that smoke my stuff. And that's unfortunately not the case. The case at this point, at this point is, is that it is a social club, exactly what it says. You know? It's a community-driven project, and it's just a, <clears throat> a platform for people that are wanting to do something in the industry to contract themselves out to each other. So it's very important for any newbie, anybody that's coming into this, to realize straight away it's definitely not a commercial venture. It's definitely not an opportunity to buy a franchise and open a turnkey business and boom, once there's no any Dafa game. It doesn't work like that. There's a lot that still needs to needs to happen before we get. Right, so permaculture flower. I can go on with this for days and as we go on through the conference, we'll obviously reference back to this and I'll show you how I personally try and apply this to, to pretty much every decision that I make. So before I forgot I just had to say that. The Permaculture flower, I'll be hammering on about this and I'll tell you a bit more. I think for today, um, we are running a little bit low on time, so if Mark is okay with it, 
you know, Zaini. I want to take you guys on a bit of a walk through on the facility we have at the moment. So this is an absolutely stunning place. It's the Oratorium van the Congregatie van St. Philip Neri in Uitsworen. Alright. Shoot, sure, try, try that in one sentence. Um, there's various projects happening on this one site. There's an alcohol fetal syndrome center that's in the corner over there. There's an orphanage here. They run a soup kitchen. There's a, 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 a homeless shelter that's built. There's a tunnel at the back here where um, there's vegetables being grown. This is the quick tour I got from Mark the first day. And this is my Dacha tunnel where I grow cannabis. <laughs> so um, I think we should take a bit of a walk through so you guys can see when we refer to Father Mark and refer to the project and the club and whatever, where it is and what it looks like. Please feel free to ask a couple of questions and um, don't get lost in this permaculture. This will come back with the next sessions and we'll cover, cover a bit more. Mark, is jij happy as we so van die tunnel om so om gaan? Hoe wil jij? Wat heb jij gedacht? Dan heb je een zo en dan een zo Misschien zo, dan doen we een warm Kom eens terug. Of. Dan heb je dan zo af en dan je opkomen en alles te zien. Oké, alles te zo. Dan maak het al plat. Oké, so please, any questions? Boy, die maak. Maak jij dat mensen die zo wat anders al kunnen verstaan? Yeah, like a vibe going on, yeah. Mm. Yeah, everyone introduced themselves. You can feel that networking energy is in the air. So, yeah, no, very impressed. Eh? It's going good. Now we're going to take a little tour. Yeah, we get to tour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like to use the opportunity just so we can get to know each other a little bit better. I want you guys, if you traveled in a group, you're more than welcome to introduce yourself as a group. But where you are, we're just going to go around and quickly say who you are, what you're doing here, and what do you want to get out of this. So I'm Kubus. My business's name is Grow on Africa. You don't know that by now. <laughs> 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 I'm blessed enough to call this my hometown for the last four years. Um, I'm just enthusiastic about life. That's basically who I am. I like to see stuff work and I hate wasted opportunities. And that's why I'm here. Yes, if you haven't been to the Canada Club in Plate, I've got a flipping stunning cultivation area there. Outdoor, I've got a covered greenhouse, they've been running a good show there. What about Harry's now? But I was super impressed. If you want to look, see, touch, feel, show someone what cannabis is about, then that could have been awesome. Guys, we got a copious amount of outdoor weed. Love it. You guys are high focus. How's it guys? I'm Leon. Uh, with the company Can Emporium. Uh, yeah, also a very low number. Also been with Corbus since since the beginning days. And yeah, just very passionate about cannabis and cultivating cannabis. Um, and yeah, we busy expanding at the moment, so we can't wait for that to be done. But yeah, I'm just very passionate about the plant and just love growing. You guys are way too polite. Uh, it's also the 2021 Cannabis Cup winner. Oh, 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 oh. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Harris from Pittenburg Bay, um, the Cannabis Club as well, same as Wayne and Barty, my partner over there. Um, yeah, we just love cannabis, we love everything that's going on in the cannabis space and uh, we really want to work with the Goa group and get more involved, we love the whole idea. Quibus and them have been doing magic work all over South Africa so, you know, we had to come and see and meet all the people from the Goa family and uh, yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with all of you. Eh? Okay, hi guys, uh, my name is Berti, I'm the media partner at the Canna Club. So we've got a little YouTube channel, it's called The Canna Club. So if you want to see this video afterwards, you can go check it out on there. We've got about, we're on episode 37 now. So there's a bunch of videos which show everything that's happening at the club. Um, some empowerment, what we're doing in the communities. If you want to learn how to grow, there's a lot of little tutorial videos and all that. 
So yeah, I'm just a media partner there at the Canna Club, okay. Platenburg Bay. It's some awesome content. Cool. I saw you guys did a trip with a bus to some cultivators on the yeah. East Coast. Yes, lucky Alunsko is there. There we visited a Vian at, um, at the nice. pot, at the Turtle House as well, and Francette and them. Okay. So if you want to check out their clubs, it's all there on our, on our YouTube channel. Beautiful. Like cool. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having us.